Good evening, and welcome to the Gospel Truth. I'm Alan Jackson, bringing to you spiritual songs and hymns and the power of the spoken word of God. First of all, giving thanks to God Almighty for blessing me with this another outpouring of his tender love and mercy, and that he's allowed me once again to be on this the time side of life and have this another blessed privilege to come to you in his name by way of this television medium and to bring to you another message from his holy and divine word. And as I always do, I'd like to continue to express my appreciation and my gratitude to the production staff for their continued service to the gospel truth. And it is my prayer that God will continue to bless each one of them with those things that he knows that they are standing in need of. And I'm praying on your behalf as participant observers, and it is my prayer that God will continue to bless you and your family with all of those things that he knows that you're standing in need of as well. And then, of course, I'm encouraging you to pray on my behalf because I'm also standing in need of prayer, and it's only God who can provide me with those things that I'm standing in need of. I certainly want to welcome you to the uh, Gospel Truth, and this evening we're going to be bringing our message as we normally do. We have our song uh, and our prayer list, and so we want to encourage you to write to us and to send to us the names of your friends, your relatives, and your loved ones. We will add their names to the prayer list. I'll pray for them, encourage you to pray for them, and everyone in the viewing audience to pray for them as well. And you can send those names to The Gospel Truth at P.O. Box 3944, Berkeley, California, 94703. Or you can call the prayer line at 510-848-8843. And there you can leave the names of your friends, your relatives, and your loved ones. Or if you have a Bible question that you need answered, you can leave that question on our answering service, and we will provide an answer for you on the air. All right, and then we also want you to know we do have a channel on YouTube, and all you have to do is go to the Internet, bring up the YouTube, then bring up the Gospel Truth with Alan Jackson, and there you'll have access to all the programs we have on our channel and also our cinematographer Eddie Langford also has a channel entitled uh, Eddie Cam One so when you bring up the internet and go to Eddie Cam One then you can put in the gospel truth and then you'll see all the programs that he has on his channel so right now we're going to uh, go into our prayer list and we are continuing to pray on behalf of Annette Jeffrey and Geraldine Keys. We continue to pray also on behalf of Elizabeth Adams, Emma Jean Hayes, uh, Yvonne Davis, the Ahmad Aubrey family, and we're also praying on behalf of uh, the Brianna Taylor family, Teresa Watson, Virginia Daniels, Deborah Price, Teresa Wanzo, Joe Brokaw, Brother Josie Pitt Sr., uh, and family, Sheldon Horton, Nancy Lagarde, the Richard Brooks family, Shelley Lopez County and Cornelius County. We're also praying on behalf of the Jacob Blake family, the Daniel Prude family, uh, the Flowers, the uh, Gillum, and it's Flowers, Riley, and Gillum family, Perling Jesse. We're also praying on behalf of Candace Powers, Ter Terrence Bailey, Wilma Carpenter, Sherry Drumgool, Betty Williams of The Connection and Bethany Williams. We're also praying on behalf of Benita Coates, uh, Susan Gilmer and family. We're also praying on behalf of Dorothy Lofton. Uh, we're praying on behalf of Brenda Williams, the George Floyd family, Vincent Jones Jr., Ayanna Rowe. We're also praying on behalf of Commissar Phillips and family, uh, Dudley Sankey, Jesse Stevenson Jr., and Sylvester Stevenson Sr., we're also praying on behalf of Ursi Joyner, Curtis Porter, Chenin Jim Pitch, Darnell Red. We're also praying on behalf of Ronald Gleeds, uh, Pearly Jones and family, Valerie Sankey, Pat Malbro, Missy Williams, Willis and Norma Taylor, Wilma and Harry Kellum. And we're also praying on behalf of Otis Phillips Sr., Myra DeVore. We're also praying on behalf of Ralph Edward Stewart, Kendall Yarborough, Reggie Brown, Willamette Willard, uh, Norvell Edmondson, Roy 
excuse me, that's uh, Louise Harris, uh, Augustine Red, Damar Hamlin. We're also praying on behalf of Eddie Langford, Otis Phillips Jr. We're also praying on behalf of Gwen Hill, David Alexander, Sean Alexander, uh, D'Angelo Gleaves, Patricia, Gerard Herndon. We're also praying on behalf of uh, Jean Alexander, Robin M. Williams, Jerome Holloway, Dion Sanders, Aronda Moore, Shirley Burnell, Jermaine Minor. We're also praying on behalf of Othery Christian, uh, Donald Drungu, Lois Alexander, Bakari and Juliana Akil, Joy Hines. We're also praying on behalf of uh, District Attorney Pamela Price and Congresswoman Barbara Lee, Pierre Drungu, uh, Michelle Dean, uh, Robert Collins, Vanessa Collins. We're also praying on behalf of Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin, Thelma Gooch. We're also praying on behalf of Tracy Phillips, Rodney Dickens, uh, Jeremy Drumgu, and Katie Markham and family. And these are the three families that we're praying for. Minister Cecil Williams of the Glide Memorial Church of San Francisco. It's our prayer that his family will be comforted during this time of their bereavement. We're also praying on behalf of Mario and Otis Phillips Jr. on the loss of their stepmother. And we're also praying on behalf of the Calvin Keys family during this time of their bereavement. So we encourage you to pray for those on the Gospel Truth prayer list. And if you don't remember their names, it's quite all right. God knows who they are. And if you would just be kind enough to utter in your prayers those on the Gospel Truth prayer list, that would be sufficient. God knows who they are, and uh, they will be blessed. And you'll be blessed immensely also as a result of you praying on behalf of individuals that you perhaps may not even know. So right now, before we do get to the message, we do have a song. Uh, we have Malcolm Himes III standing by. He's going to be leading tonight. Thank you, Lord. So without any further remarks, uh, Malcolm Himes III, thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, Lord. We just want to say thank you, thank you, Lord, oh, Lord, thank you, thank you, Lord, and I just want to thank you, thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord. 
But we certainly would like to express our appreciation to Malcolm Hines III for leading that song, Thank You, Lord. I would like to invite your attention this evening to three passages. Uh, the first one is Jonah, the first chapter in the verse number 17. Now the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow up Jonah. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. Also, from the book of Numbers, the 32nd chapter and the verses number 23, in the Bible reads, But if you will not do so, behold, you have sinned against the Lord, and be sure your sin will find you out. And also from Matthew, the 25th chapter, and the verses number 11 through 13, and the Bible reads, Afterward came also the other virgin, saying, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. And so it is from these verses this evening that I am going to revisit the sins of Oakland and personal readiness. We're going to be revisiting personal readiness and the sins of Oakland. Now, some of you may remember that uh, when we dealt with the sins of Oakland, that I used Jonah as an example. And then last week, I asked you the question, are you ready? And I cited uh, my experience as a result of the death of O.J. Simpson he was 76 years old at his death, and he was born on July the 9th, 1947, which was uh, eight days after I was born. And that made me think that perhaps my time is near. And then remember, I reminded most of you baby boomers who are still around that perhaps your time is near, and I asked you if you were ready. So again, this evening, we're going to revisit uh, the ready, personal readiness and the sins of Oakland. Now, I visited the uh, ten virgins because they were a good example of being ready and not being ready. And I left with the five virgins, five wise virgins, and they were going into the marriage. Now the other five virgins, they had to leave and go buy some oil for their lamps because they had not prepared adequately for the journey. And so when they returned, the door was shut. And they called, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said unto them, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Watch therefore, for you know not neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. So I ask you tonight, do you have oil for your lamps? Somebody's saying, I don't have a lamp, therefore that is not applicable to me. Okay, I, I can understand that. But can you remember uh, Nicodemus? Nicodemus, he was a ruler of the Jews who came to Jesus by night. And he said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. And Nicodemus asked, Jesus, or rather Jesus said to he asked, Jesus answered Nicodemus and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. So Nicodemus then asked Jesus, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? 
Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born of the water and of the Spirit, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So now let me ask you, have you been born again? Well, now, if you haven't, then you are just like the five foolish virgins that had not prepared themselves for the bridegroom. So now one day, you know the Lord's going to come back. We don't know when, all right? But he is coming. He made that promise, and he's true to his word. So I'm wondering tonight, are you ready to be born again? And now, especially you baby boomers, now you see you're up there in your 70s, all right? Time is rolling right on by. So I trust that you will make the adequate preparations for the journey, the journey into eternity. This life is going to end. We all are going to die. The Bible tells us, Hebrews 9, 27, and as it is appointed unto man once to die, but after this, the judgment. Well, let me ask you. Somebody says, well, I have been born again. I've already been baptized. Okay. Well, have you committed some sins that you haven't repented of? And if not, you need to understand that Jesus said, if you die in your sin, where I am, there you cannot come. So you need to repent, uh, otherwise you'll be just like those five foolish virgins. And remember, Jesus himself said, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of God. All right? So, but he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. So, you don't want to just be going for the party. You want to be actually ready uh, when the Lord does come. All right? Now, when I left you, uh, with Jonah, and that was when we were dealing with the sins of Oakland, all right? When I left you with Jonah, he had been swallowed up by a great fish. Uh, the Bible says that God had prepared a great fish to swallow him up. Well, what happened? You remember, he was on the ship, and the ship was being tossed and driven with the storm that was in the midst of the sea. And he told them what they needed to do. They needed to cast him overboard. But again, they were trying to be sympathetic, and they were still rowing, trying to make it to the land. But they couldn't. So finally, they had to throw Jonah overboard. And then once they threw him overboard or got sin off of the ship, then immediately the sea was calm. And so I said, open, once you get sin out of the city, all right, and out of the devil, out of the church, then things would be much better for you. And so we need to understand. So what we're going to do tonight is go back to see what happened with Jonah because he was in the belly of the fish for three days and three nights. Now while Jonah was in the belly of the fish, he prayed. Oh, he prayed. You have to go over there to Jonah, the second chapter, and read that. I'm not going to try to deal with all of that for you. But tonight, you can also go back over. But while he was in there, all right, and he considered that to be the belly of hell. That's the way he was looking at it. But he was praying. Oh, he was praying earnestly if he could just get out. You know, I told you sometimes we'd be in those situations and say, Lord, if you can just, if you let me get out of this, I promise I'm going to be faithful. I'm going to be good. Well, you know, we, we do those kind of things. And I'm pretty sure that was going on in Jonah's mind. But you can read that prayer that he was praying on his behalf in an effort to get out of that. Uh, that situation that he was in. The Bible says, and he's cried and said, By reason of my affliction unto the Lord, and he heard me. Out of the belly of hell cried I, and then, and thou heardest my voice. All right? He was praying. I mean, he was a praying brother, a praying prophet. Yes, indeed. And then, uh, after hearing Jonah's prayers, the Lord spoke unto the fish, and it vomited Jonah upon dry land. Now, we all should be able to learn from Jonah, because when God has something for you to do, come hell or high water, you are going to get it done. And my dear grandmother, may she rest in peace, Dicey Jackson, she said to me, son, if God has something for you to do, you are certainly going to do it. And then we find the Bible says in Jonah 3 and 1, 
And the word of the Lord came unto Jonah the second time, saying, Arise and go unto Nineveh, that great city, and preach unto it the preaching that I bid thee. So now this time, Jonah learned his lesson. So he didn't try to run from God. And that's another point. You know what? You can run, but you can't hide from God. All right? So just keep that in mind. I don't care how many bushes you try to get up under or, 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 or heels you try to hide behind. You can run, but you can't hide from God. All right? And so Jonah did. He arose and he went unto Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. And uh, now uh, he found himself was, uh, well, let's put it like this. The, the journey was only three days, but he went on. He went on to that great city of Nineveh, and he had great joy in his heart this time because God had blessed him, let him live, gave him a second chance. A chance. See, that's what's good about God. He'll give you another opportunity. He, he'll give you more than two as long as you recognize your shortcomings and what you need to do, then the Lord will bless you to be able to do those things. And then, if you will, we can uh, let me go over here to the book of Jonah so I can read to you the fifth verse. That's what I want to read to you. Uh, let's see, that's going to be Jonah, the third chapter, verse number five. And this is what the Bible says. So the people of Nineveh believed God and proclaimed a, fa a fast and put on sackcloth from the greatest of them even to the least of them. In other words, as a result of now Jonah doing what God asked him to do, there was a great change in the city of Nineveh, that great city. And so I'm saying to the city of Oakland, you can once again flourish and thrive. Once, of course, you get sin out of the city and the devil out of the church then of course everything will be very good for you and for your families. And just need to understand that I'm doing what the Lord would have me to do, to preach to you so that a change can come about. Now Oakland, you don't have the Raiders, uh -huh. you don't have the Warriors, and now you don't have the A's. But you can flourish and thrive again by getting sin out of your city. Well, again, the question is, well, how can the city uh, repent? Well, again, it's the individual. It's the individuals in the city that make up the city. So you have to take a look at yourself. Do a little self-examination. See where you have fallen short, failing to do the things that you should have done. And then just being in, uh, uh, in, in other words, you have failed or you have sinned against the will of God. You need to correct that so that things will be right for you and your family. And just as it was when Jonah was thrown on the old board, out of the ship, because you, you read that, or you can read it again, Jonah, the first chapter, and, and, and that experience that they had, all of those sailors and everybody that was on there, and, and their experience. But once they got Jonah overboard, or sin, out of the ship, huh? got it off, sin off the ship, now everything's smooth. Now just understand, this example is for us. When we get sin out of our lives, everything will be good and smooth for us. So you just have to trust in the Lord with all your heart, mind, body, and soul, and he will provide you with the thing that you need. So again, the question is, are you ready tonight for the Lord? And I asked earlier, well, you know, do you have a lamp for your oil? And somebody says, well, I don't have a lamp. So that's not applicable to me. I know, I know. But that's when I took you over to John 3 and talked about Nicodemus to make sure that you've done what you need to do. And what do you need to do? You need to be born again. Well, how does that come about? Well, first of all, when you hear God's word and believe it with all of your heart, repent of your sins, confess that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, and then you are born by being buried in the liquid grave of baptism for the remission of your sins. You then rise up a new creature in Christ Jesus, and the Lord has now added you to his body, which is his church. Keep in mind, you went down dirty, but now you come up clean. You went down a sinner, but now you come up a saint. You went down in the world, but now you're in the church. And that's what the Lord will do. He will add you to his body, which is his church. So once again, by faith, repentance, confession, and baptism, 
By doing those things, the Lord will add you to his body, which is his church. And if you live a faithful life, he will save you in the end. I'm Alan Jackson, and I'm inviting you to join us again next week, if it's God's will, when the gospel truth will once again come your way, bringing to you spiritual songs and hymns and the power of the spoken word of God. I'm inviting you to stay tuned for the uh, West Oakland Church of Christ. You'll be receiving a message from Dr. Amar Sahili. Until then, it's my prayer that God will continue to bless you and your family and to keep you all safe.